Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you to the Traffic and Transportation Commission meeting for Ju uh, July 15th, 2024. We'll go ahead and start with a roll call. Commissioner Varnell? Here. Commissioner Littlefield? Here. Commissioner Long? Present. Commissioner Hale? Here, sir. Commissioner Shuline? Here. Go to Commissioner Wynn? Here. And Commissioner George and Commissioner Cornette are not available today. All right, next on the agenda, we have the approval of the, sorry, that might be a meeting. Okay, let's try that now. Okay, uh, I need a motion concerning approval of the Traffic and Transportation Commission meeting minutes from May 20th. 2024. Motion to approve. Motion to approve from Commissioner Hale. Second. Second by Commissioner Barnell. Any discussion? And just a note, there was no June meeting. Okay, we have a motion to approve the minutes from Commissioner Hale, seconded by Commissioner Barnell. Time to vote. Okay, we have uh, Six in favor, one abstain, so the item has passed. Uh, reports from Traffic Services Division in the Counselor's Office. What you got there, sir? All right, you've got our standard monthly reports on commission approved signals for public funding. And uh, one thing I want to point out to you on the report that we provided for the alternative speed abatement program is that at this point in time, we've got um, just a pair of speed cushions pending delivery, which are going to go on. Uh, Northwest 18th Street, which will be east of east of Council, uh, Classen, excuse me, and of the original $50,000 allocation from the City Council, we are standing with an available balance of $14,806 at this point. And beyond that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about the program or anything else I've provided in the way of monthly reports. Okay, Councilor, sir, you have anything? Okay, nothing from the council office. All right, we should introduce uh, Chris Hall. Chris Hall's the new municipal counselor assigned to support the division, or support this commission. Okay, thank you. Nice having you. Okay, there's no items on the consent docket, so we go to item 5A, Michelle Golub. Uh, always stop control at Haida Goal Avenue and Southwest 49th Street. We have somebody here to speak on this item? I believe, yes sir. If you come up to a microphone, if I could have your name and address and you'll have up to five minutes. Uh, thanks, my name is James Haken. I live at 4820 Hamiltonian Lane, which is just around the corner from the proposed stop signs. Um, there was just a sign out to come and speak if possible on behalf of these, so I, I wanted to push for them just given the increase in traffic. Um, since our neighborhood's essentially finished out. And um, I live right around the corner where a lot of delivery di drivers will come through. And there's not a lot of consideration for the kids and the amount of kids in the neighborhood. And the two-way yield stop that's there simply doesn't do a whole lot for people that are making their money based on completion of routes. And a stop sign, I think, on all four corners, we get a lot more attention both ways also between <clears throat> my phase and the phase south of there there's a lot of kids that ride bikes crossing over to get to the park to the north um, so I just wanted to put in a word pushing for these stop signs if at all possible all right Thanks. very good sir thank you anybody else wanted to speak on 5a staff all right, you've got our analysis before you. Uh, this particular intersection doesn't meet any of the city's or the MUTCD criteria for use of always stop control. Uh, there aren't any mitigating circumstances like uh, reduced decision site distance at the intersection. Uh, the applicant did provide a petition demonstrating local support for the request to change. Uh, the petition provi provided showed that 92% of residents within the required petition canvas area supported the request to change the intersection from yield control to always stop control and so action on the item will be at the discretion of the commission all right 
can we have a motion concerning 5A? I'd like to see a map of this, an uh, aerial photograph of this, just as if I'm, I, if I remember correctly, there's probably about a three, three blocks um, T where they, I mean, you can generate quite a bit of speed and there's not any stop control in there. I am inclined to agree with the applicant just for the simple fact is you've got a four way, you've got traffic coming from four different ways and there's not really anything that's going to slow anybody down other than the good buddy system mm -hmm. or and you know as well as I know sometimes that doesn't work very well and you throw kids in the mix and then you throw um, you know inclement weather in the mix and things like that so I'm looking at this and, and I may be wrong but I'm looking at it from a safety standpoint um, just to try and in in Obviously, the stop signs are not designed to slow people down. They're there to, they're, they're in results not to slow traffic. It's to move traffic along in an orderly fashion. And this particular deal, I believe that that would be the only area in that neighborhood that would probably need the all-way traffic control. Everywhere else you, you, everywhere else you generate you would have to yield to the main thoroughfare coming through there. So I would like to make a motion at the end of the day, uh, make a motion that we approve this item uh, for these citizens in this particular neighborhood. Okay, we have a motion to approve 5A from Commissioner Lauren. Do we have a second? Second. All right, second by uh, Commissioner Wynn. Any, di any discussion on this item? Okay, we have a motion to approve 5A from Commissioner Long, second by Commissioner Wynn. You both please. Item is approved, we're all in favor. Okay, we go on now to item 5B. Uh, Heather Z Z Z Z Zacharias, uh, head of school, Western Gateway Elementary School for a school zone, and it goes up on the screen there. Do we have anybody here to speak on item 5B? Okay, staff, do we have any input? Okay, you've got comments before you. Uh, in this particular case, when uh, the principal sub or head of school submitted the request, they asked for a school zone on, Mc on South McKinley Avenue. Um, when we reviewed the location and the area, we saw that um, Southwest 15th Street, which passes beside the school, would probably also need to be signed as a school zone as well. So this, in this particular item, you're looking at a school zone on McKinley, which has got a posted speed limit of 30, and one on Southwest 15th, which is posted at 25. So if it, the location would be conforming for a neighborhood school to have school zones signed, at, signed as requested. In this particular case, the uh, school zone on South McKinley Avenue, due to its higher speed limit, would be uh, signed, and we would use uh, school zone warning flashers. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have on the item, and action will be at the commission's discretion. Okay, do we have a motion concerning item 5B? Mr. Chairman, I move the application be approved. <clears throat> we have a motion to approve 5B from Commissioner Shuline. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Hale. Any discussion? Okay, motion to approve item 5B from Commissioner Shuline, seconded by Commissioner Hale, and we're ready to vote. Item is approved with all seven in favor. All right. We all now go to item 5C and 5D. I'm going to read them both in, and then uh, that way Ms. Dobbs gets to come up at one time. So uh, for Ms. Dobbs, a Midtown District Manager, a Downtown Oklahoma City Partnership. Uh, but 5C is always stop control at North Walker Avenue and Northwest 15th Street. And 5D, always stop control at North Harvey Avenue and Northwest 9th Street. So, ma'am, come on up. Let me have your name and address. And uh, we'll give you a little bit more time than five because you're talking two items if you need it. And uh, just make it clear to us which one that you're talking about at what time. 
Great, thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Jakey Dobbs, and I live at 101 Northeast 53rd Street. I am the Midtown District Manager through Downtown OKC Partnership, and I'm here on behalf of the Midtown Board of Directors that represents the interests of property owners, business owners, residents, and other stakeholders in Midtown. Midtown is a vibrant district with hundreds of businesses and residents. However, two intersections lack proper traffic control, creating dangerous situations for, de for pedestrians and drivers. We are asking the Traffic and Transportation Commission to approve four-way stops added to two intersections in Midtown. The first I'll mention is North Walker Avenue at Northwest 12th Street is the only intersection from 10th and 13th Streets without a four-way stop. However, it is extremely busy as it is close proximity to two coffee shops, a large apartment complex, several parking lots, um, a bank with an ATM, retail stores, and multiple restaurants. Notably, Not Your Average Joe, an inclusive employer of adults and students with disabilities, is adjacent to this intersection, adding additional safety concerns. Reports of close calls between pedestrians and vehicles, vehicle collisions, and near-miss incidents are frequent, occurring weekly, if not daily. Personally, I've had two close encounters with vehicles in the past four months while wearing a bright red uh, Midtown shirt. The intersection's challenges are increased by multiple side obstructions, including a large black metal fence that has a banner on it. Uh, the second intersection I'll mention is North Harvey Avenue, Northwest 9th Street. It presents challenges primarily around heavy on-street parking, which often requires vehicles to pull directly into the intersection before um, making a decision on whether to turn or go straight. Um, so there are often um, challenges with oncoming, oncoming traffic and pedestrians. It's located near popular restaurants and professional businesses, and this intersection sees significant foot traffic throughout the week. And um, we also had an anecdote that a family member of one of my staff members uh, totaled their vehicle at this intersection after they were T-boned by a vehicle. I've been in this role for two and a half years and I've received considerable feedback from stakeholders um, to these two intersections about extreme close encounters for pedestrians and vehicles. Midtown has continued to grow with new construction, businesses, and residential properties, meaning these intersections will only continue to become more dangerous um, to those who are trying to enjoy our district. We hope the commission will see how valuable and impactful adding four-way stops to these two intersections would be for pedestrians, businesses, and residents, and then thank you for your consideration. Do you have any questions for me? No, that's fine, thank you. Do we have anybody else that wants to speak on these two items? All right, thank you very much, staff. All right, you've got comments on both of these before you. Um, when we ran our always stop control analysis on Walker and Northwest 12th Street, we found that based, we had to use the, uh, the current edition of the manual on uniform traffic control devices. Um, I'll just call your attention to page three because on this, in the report, the, uh, the newest version of the manual, which came out this January, has got five criteria for use in considering always stop control request in conditions such as this. There's a the first warrant A is for a crash experience, B is for sight distance, C is a, uh, a warrant. If a traffic signal is warranted, you can, use, you can consider the use of always stop control as an interim measure. Uh, D is related to eight, hour, eight hours of a typical day as far as uh, vehicular volumes go, and then E would be other factors which are typically related to sight distance, well, not, not sight distance, but um, other, other considerations, there might be uh, speeds or other things to consider. In this particular case, uh, the 12th and Walker intersection does not have a crash history, which would lend itself to having to, having to use always stop control in a situation like this. Uh, similarly, over at Harvey and Northwest 9th Street, that intersection is a little bit different in as much as it did have a, it did have a crash experience which would meet current MUTCD warrants for consideration for the use of always stop control. Both of the locations are kind of in the downtown urban core, so they are, there are, uh, they have a greater tendency to see uh, pedestrian volumes as opposed to uh, intersections in the out outlying suburban areas of the city. So action on both items will be at the discretion of the commission and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about either application. All right, so we'll go ahead and go with 5C. Do we have a motion concerning item 5C? Mr. Chairman, I move the application be approved. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Shuline to approve item 5C. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Littlefield. Any discussion on this one? Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5C 
by Commissioner Schuline, seconded by Commissioner Littlefield. And we're ready to vote. Item has approved, but all seven in favor. Okay, we go on now to item 5D, uh, which is the North Harvey Avenue and Northwest 9th Street. Do we have a motion concerning 5D? Chairman, I'll uh, <coughs> move that this application also be approved. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Schuline. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Littlefield. Any discussion on item 5D? Okay, motion to approve 5D, Commissioner Schuline. Second by Commissioner Littlefield. Votes, please. Item has passed with all seven in favor. Okay, we go on now to item 5E. Uh, Stephen Stefanik, uh, Superintendent, Hardin Independent Charter District. Uh, school zone on North Kelly. Uh, it's all listed up there on the screen. Hi, sir. If you come on up, uh, you got your name and address, and you have five minutes. Yes, sir. And don't think you're 17 again. That's what happens. You break your legs. So. <laughs> well, first, uh, Stephen Stefanik, superintendent of Harding Independent School, has been doing it now for 13 years. I represent the property as stated above 12600 North Kelly Avenue. Um, and I want to thank you for letting me speak. I know it's an option, but the city of Oklahoma City allows that option to the public. You'll see here um, there's a property that's been there a long time that has changed in schools for over the years. And I've had the privilege to run our schools for so long. We've been one of the top performing schools in the city and had a full um, fundraising campaign to open up a brand new elementary school at this location that costs us now $2 million for renovation. It will open up next month. Um, and it will be an elementary school with pre-K through fourth grade. Um, right next to it is Kelly Avenue that has a speed limit of, uh, I believe, 45 miles per hour and wonderful uh, car dealerships right next to it um, that love to take that road in a different speed. Um, and so I'm very concerned about the safety of the little ones. Uh, we also have a high school that's just two blocks south of that Harding Charter Prep High School that has a school zone already, um, a high school that is a mile off of Kelly and still has a school zone, but this one is uh, feet away from Kelly. And so I request a school zone to be put in place to keep students and continue to do what the city does and be proactive in ensuring that accidents don't happen um, and not be reactive. So thank you, and I'm here for any questions. All right, thank you very much. Uh, there's nobody else to speak, so staff input. All right, well, you've got our comments before you. Um, as noted in the in the analysis section of our report that um, this will be a charter school so enrollment is not it's not a tip a typical neighborhood school so attendance attendance boundary is the students can come from all different areas to attend this particular school so action on the item is going to be at the discretion of the Commission I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about the application all right do we have a motion concerning item 5e uh, I move to approve we have a motion to approve 5E from Commissioner Wynn. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Hale. Any discussion? Uh, I just have a comment about school zones. Who sets the, the times that they would be activated? We work with the uh, each school district on times. Matter of fact, that's one of the projects that we're working on right now. We've got a request into every district and we're in the pro actively in the process of programming all the districts. We get, um, start and stop times based for all the different types of schools through all the different districts because elementaries will have different start and stop times from the middles from the high schools and ordinarily we start our flashers about 30 minutes in advance of the uh, the start of school and start of school is diff is uh, dependent on whether or not they've got like a uh, any before school programs like if they offer breakfast or meals or something like that we will tailor our schedules to accommodate that and then typically run to about 15 minutes after the after the uh, the bell rings, and then likewise we do the same thing in the afternoon sessions. Uh, how is it controlled for holidays and days off and snow days and stuff like that? That is part of the annual programming that we put in because when we request schedules from the schools, we ask them for like known days off when they have in services, when they'll be out for holidays and things along that line. Snow days are a little bit more challenging because in, in the event that there's a snow day and we're snowed out of the office, it's not really possible to get in and make a modification to the plan. However, um, 
all other known scheduled days off are pre-programmed. Mm. So, and that's, and you know, there's a lot of different days off. A lot of, some schools have got early releases on certain days of the week. So it's quite a challenge to program when you've right. got the sheer number of districts that and are. And then, then who, yeah. who does that for the city? Uh, that's actually done by staff in my office. Okay, by, by traffic management. Yes. Okay, well that's good information, thank you. Any other discussion items for 5E? Okay, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Wynn, seconded by Commissioner Hale, and we're almost ready to vote. Almost. Or is it me? Ah, it's me. I'm on the wrong one. There we go, sorry. Oh, I wasn't the only one. All right, item has passed with all seven in favor. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, we go on now to item six, comments from citizens, and we're out of them. <laughs> we ran them off. All right, and now reports from commissioners, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Commissioner Varnell? None for me, thank Commissioner you. Commissioner Littlefield? I do, there's something kind of interesting going on in the city if you're not aware of it. <clears throat> the planning department is working on a project called ADU, Successory Dwelling Units. Are, are you all familiar with, with what that is? It's, um, it's, a, it's a, you're gonna learn better from folks that will be speaking to us next month, but from what I understand about it is it's a kind of a use change in residential zoning, R1 single family zoning. And it is in a boundary that is uh, from Northwest 63rd Street all the way south to Southwest 59th Street from I-35 to I-44. And what the intent of this proposal is, is to encourage higher density living and these, these accessory dwelling units would be permitted to be built by a pure permitting process. It wouldn't be a public process, which is currently the way through an SPUD with a planning commission hearing, et cetera. So the, the intent is to provide possible um, an inventory of affordable housing to provide um, higher, the higher density housing would have hopefully a net effect where it would cut back on uh, suburban development, which puts taxes on the city with utilities and fire and ambulance, et cetera. So what, why I'm speaking about it today is there's an awful lot of chatter on um, social media about this proposal. It's been, it's been heard, uh, discussed several times at the Planning Commission already. There's a lot of people uh, are concerned primarily about these driving vehicles onto neighborhood streets for parking purposes. There are some parking uh, requirements that they're discussing in the proposal that I'm not real clear on yet. I think it has to do with the width of the street perhaps. But the citizenry are concerned about, about this proposal with on-street parking becoming a problem. And, and the reason why I think it's important to discuss this at the Traffic Commission is to offer the citizenry an opportunity to understand how we work with challenges like that. Let's say this were to cause a, a congestion on a particular street or part of a street, how would we go about helping that block or that neighborhood if this were to be the case? So what I've done is, um, I know you all know Justin Henry, who wasn't here today, but Justin Henry is a part of that project and, and it's Lisa Cronister, she's the assistant planning director. I have visited with both of them and they wanna to put together a little presentation for us in August and give us an opportunity to ask questions, understand it better and talk about the, the consequence if it were to increase on street parking and if that would be a problem and how we would be able to work that out if the proposal should come to fruition. So I'm excited about it. I think it's gonna be a great conversation. That's it for me. All right, we'll go to Commissioner Long, Commissioner Hale, Commissioner Shulein, Commissioner Witt. 
Not so much a report, but I was wondering if Stuart could help us. Uh, I think since the last time we talked, the Olympics were announced here. Uh, what kind of work is the city gonna do to try to prepare for something like that? I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of work that's done <laughs> in support of it. It's, you know, it's, it's a very recent announcement, so. But more will, more will be known as we get closer, I suppose. Yeah, well, yeah and, it, and it goes with anything else. You're gonna have a lot of people coming in going to two different venues, you know, one on the outskirts a bit uh, for the uh, softball and one that's right down, down here. Uh, yeah, you would think that uh, moving people, the, the, uh, the actual athletes is one issue and then all the people that come for it, which is a great opportunity for us to go see something of, of that nature. I mean, if you're not in that big city, you gotta go there. Well, here it's coming to us. So. And we all love uh, softball. Don't know about the water one yet. We'll have to figure out what that is. But, <laughs> but we all love the uh, softball. So yeah, and we got what four, year, two years, four years. Yeah, that's a four-year one. Yeah, we got four years on that. Uh, okay. So uh, I don't have anything. Am I right, Don? I don't have anything. <laughs> All right, Captain, you got anything for us? I do not. Okay, Captain's got nothing for us. Anybody got anything else for us? Okay, we are adjourned.